Welcome to SchoolNet's webinar series of past finalists and winners in Microsoft's Partners in Learning Forum in South Africa. I am Fiona Beale and I am hosting this webinar. I would like to introduce you to Ryan Galvin, who will now tell you about his project on Romeo and Juliet. Over to you, Ryan. Woohoo! <laughs> Yay! Uh, it's quite ironic, like, doing this computer thing, and I'm like probably the most computer illiterate person. But <laughs> okay, next problem, gotta get this thing to the beginning. Nearly there! Ah! Okay, cool. First off, good evening everybody, and thank you for your time. Uh, thanks for listening. All right, let me jump straight into this. All right. Having finished studying Romeo and Juliet, some members of the class queried why we were studying something written so long ago. All right, so in an attempt to persuade the class that the story of Romeo and Juliet is relevant to any time, I decided to give them the opportunity to use some 21st century tools to retell the story and at the same time, revise the play. The project included tools which they are familiar with, namely MP3s on their cell phones, iPods, YouTube, Twitter-type writing in the form of tweets, as well as digital cameras and videos. The project ended by creating a movie, make, uh, sorry, a movie maker slide show using the music, tweets and photos which they had worked with. Basically, this project enables 21st century children to work with 21st century tools in order to make a 15th century play relevant to their own lives through a medium, music, which is easily accessible and understood by them. The main components of this project or learning activity were number one, the revision of grade 10 set work, Romeo and Juliet. Number two, the identification of the key scenes throughout the play. Thirdly, was the selection of music for each scene. And fourthly, it was the summary of each selected scene in the form of a tweet of 140 characters, as well as the creation of a movie with pictures, video, soundtracks, and subtitles. This project took place over a period of two weeks at the end of the term. The learners were responsible for creating their own work schedules as they worked in groups to summarize the key scenes and select the various pieces of music as soundtracks. All right, the learners assessed their peers' work in different ways. Firstly, they commented on each other's summaries electronically. Second, each group was given verbal feedback on their choice of music. And thirdly, written feedback was given in the form of a reflection on the finished project. The learners used three main tools for this project. Firstly, they used Twitter. Having only 140 characters for the summary makes learners look at the content and language used very critically. And replies instead of face-to-face -face comments encourages interaction, if only because of the novelty. Secondly, music mp3s were used. Music is very important to teenagers and by allowing them to choose the music which they like to listen to during class on their cell phones was very engaging to the learners. Lastly, we used social networking tools, namely Facebook and Mixit, which allowed for the quick collection of data. Alright, as what's going to come next is just, I'm going to go through it quite quickly, is just a couple of scenes like my evidence of learning of the kids having like fun in class. Alright, in this slide, James, who is normally weak in class, rose to the occasion and took charge of his group and assisted them in producing a top-class production. The learners found it an absolute treat to be able to use their phones, talk freely in class, and be allowed to use Facebook. Come 
me. Uh, this is just a slide of um, some of the responses that we did get from Facebook, from their peers responding to which scene they thought was the best or the most appropriate for their group to do. And the final slide, the looks of content on their little faces just like says it all. All right. The way in which the learners collaborated changed the end product into something more than I expected. On more than one occasion, I had learners who were typically non-performers in class rising to the foreground and taking charge and generally outperforming the rest. This success can be greatly accredited to the fact that these learners were learning and working within a medium which they understood and could relate to. So in a sense, one could go as far as saying that we as teachers are not realizing the learners' full potential by not allowing them to use other mediums, i.e. computers, as a means of instruction. One of the biggest achievements of this project was that the learners gained a deeper understanding of the themes and the relevance of the Shakespeare play Romeo and Juliet. One of the highlights with regards to this was a statement made by a pupil, pupil named Artie, a learner in the class. His group chose to do the balcony scene. They had the song, When a Man Loves a Woman, playing. Suddenly his arms were flailing in the air and a look of desperation shot across his face. He turned to the other members of his group and asked them, how are we going to show the audience that Romeo and Juliet have just matured from being kids into young adults ready to accept the responsibilities of marriage? The deeper understanding of the balcony scene through Artie's response was very encouraging. Now thinking that this project didn't have any downfalls, one would be gravely mistaken. One of the biggest problems was time. Finding time available in the computer room was often an issue. Secondly, finding computers that were working and had all the correct programs on was a task in itself. Another problem encountered was that of the dreaded copyright. But with a little research, this problem was overcome as it was, was discovered that one may use a song for a maximum of 30 seconds and this will not breach the Copyright Act. All right, this learning activity allows for interaction from the world outside the classroom by allowing those outside the classroom to help with the selection of relevant scenes using Facebook, Mixit, BDM, and other familiar tools. These completed projects are also to be posted up on YouTube. Furthermore, the use of Web2 tools like Facebook, Twitter, and cell phone technology like MP3s and Mixit has enabled learners to make connections between the English classroom and the wider world. The use of music, MP3s, is a use of ICT that engages the learners at play, which is not always so in the classroom. All right, and in closing, I believe that as a teacher, I have changed the learning process significantly through the use of ICT in the classroom with respect to this project. This was achieved by putting the learning into the hands of the learners. They had to plan, implement, and think critically about their own and others' work. And secondly, the learners have used ICT, which they are familiar with, to make a topic that could be very alien, more relevant to themselves as 21st century learners. Cool, and that's the end. Thank you so much for listening, and Fiona, back to you. That was Ryan Galvin telling you about his project on Romeo and Juliet. Thank you for sharing with us tonight, Ryan. Good night, everyone.